Good morning, San Diego. Gary Winthorpe here. I'm here to teach you about something I have no clue about whatsoever. But through the short straw, and I'm stuck reading a bit of A4 paper with a bunch of very reliable information about the Boxer Rebellion in China to you guys. So let's start by picking up the pace a bit, so you can all understand what I'm saying. This is the Boxer Rebellion, also known as the Boxer Uprising, or yeah, the Movement. In a nutshell, the Boxer Rebellion, but in China, from 1898 through to 1901, bringing in acts of violence, aggression, brutality and cruelty, which was carried out by and against Chinese nationalists, tied to foreign influence and promoters of Christianity. By the late 1890s, a Chinese secret group, the Society of Righteous and Harmonious Fears, had begun carrying out regular attacks on foreigners and Chinese Christians. On June 20, 1900s, the Boxer began a siege of Beijing's foreign embassy district, where the official quarters of foreign diplomats were located. The following day, King Empress Duwagal, all 60, declared a war on all foreign nations with political ties in China, including America, Britain, Germany, France, Russia, Japan, Italy, British India, and Austria-Hungary. The Boxer Rebellion formally ended with the signing of the Boxer Protocol on September 7, 1901. An agreement signed, force protecting Beijing were to be destroyed, Boxer and Chinese government officials involved in the rebellion were to be punished, foreign ministries were permitted to station troops in Beijing for their defence, China was banned from important arms for two years, and China agreed to pay more than $330 million in compensation to the foreign nations involved. Now there's a question written here. How did the Boxer Rebellion affect the relationship between China and all these countries they attacked? Wait, China dated all these countries? Anyway, now for the saucy thingies. This image that should be shown on the screen right about now, I believe it to be a book, maybe, but this book titled The Boxer Rebellion in China 1898-1900 to is a case study book, whatever that means. It apparently contains a map, yep, that one there, indicating where the area that was affected by the Boxing Boxer Uprising. It has a timeline from 1793 to September 1901 that contains all events that occurred within those two dates. It contains information about the origins, aims and memberships of the Boxer Society, the main characteristics of the Boxers, theories about the Boxers and the consequences of the rebellion and its implications for China and the Qing Dynasty. The rather large, unbearably long book contains many reliable, freaking cool photographs, like this one. Chinese soldiers employed as peacekeepers during the Boxer Rebellion, and this one. The Dawaga Empress, seated, receives the wives of foreign diplomats in 1903, showing Sixie is holding hands with Mrs. Sarah Pike Conga, one of the survivors of the Boxer Siege of the Beijing Legation. And this one. The Boxer Rebellion was aimed at the foreigners, but most of the victims were Chinese. Christian converts often suffered the most, and then this one, my favourite. Japanese troops, part of the international force that crushed the Boxer Uprising and beheaded Boxer prisoners. Look at all those heads. Oh, yay, another book. This one I like, only because of the author's name, Sean McGuffin. <laughs> McGuffin. And it has some reliable info. Yeah, that too. Sean McGuffin. <laughs> Goes into depth on what happened during the Boxer Rebellion, the impacts it had on China, and who was going to lead China after the Qing Dynasty. This source is very reliable because some of the information is first person and third person, which gives us a non-biased perspective of what happened. The photos put into the work are maps, yes, another map, from that period of time and modern time. The source is useful because the information contained is very well put together and is very helpful and easy to understand for people like me, Gary Winthorpe. Now for this beauty, the fire pass. Bit of round brass or bronze metal measuring one and a half inches. Nah, apparently it's a pretty cool find. The circular Shanghai Fire Brigade fire pass is an extremely rare Boxer Rebellion era fire pass, possibly the only one extant, dating back to approximately 1898 to 1901, the exact years of the rebellion. What a coincidence. The badge shows a wide at centre, made up of various participants' nations' flags. At the bottom right is the American flag, the flag of Great Britain, and possibly the Imperial German flag. Among the wide, the flags of France, Russia, Japan, Italy, British India, and Austria-Hungary and three other countries can be found. That's a lot of countries, especially for someone to date. The fire pass has great significance to our case study apparently because of the flags that are shown on the piece. King Stawaga, or Sixty, or however you say that tongue twister, declared a war on all foreign nations with diplomatic ties in China. This was the start of the Boxer Rebellion. These foreign nations with diplomatic ties in China are all shown on the fire pass. America, Great Britain, Germany, France, Russia, Japan, Italy, British India and Austria-Hungary. Another coincidence, which is ironic as some people would see, that flags being shown on a metal-like object would mean to protect, but these countries were actually against the whole rebellion. So, to answer the question, how did the Boxer Rebellion affect the relationship between China and all the countries they attacked? 
China has never been good with other countries, especially because they dated them all. Still can't believe that. But the Boxer Rebellion alienated the Western community from China and reiterated the Eurocentric ideology that the Chinese are uncivilised. China have only become, in the last 25 years, involved with other countries and trade because of the cheap stock they make, sell and trade.